Welcome to Pseudo Scientific. I'm Darren. I'm Vivian, and today we're going to be talking about the puzzle that could potentially end the world. According to legend, somewhere in Hanoi, Vietnam, there's a temple, and inside the temple there are 64 discs on one of three pegs. Legend has it that if you move all the discs from one peg to another, the world would end. But it's not a very efficient doomsday device. Even by moving one disc per second until the end of time, it would still take around 585 billion years to get all of the discs from one peg to another. That's over 42 times the age of the current universe. To speed this up, we would either get rid of half the discs or add another peg to make a different type of puzzle called a Reese puzzle. Which one do you think would be faster? Getting rid of half the discs or adding another peg? Stick around till the end to find out. And we'll also be using math and CS to solve this problem. And at the very end, we'll be showing you how to play around with your own Hanoi simulation online. So make sure to like and subscribe. You might have seen one of these puzzles before as a kid, or even better, played with one yourself. This is called the Tower of Hanoi, and today we're going to be learning how to solve it. The rules for this game are pretty simple. You can only move one disc at a time, and you can't put larger discs on top of smaller discs. So for example, this move would be illegal. The objective of the game is to get the entire stack from one peg to the other peg. So with four discs like this, what do you think is the lowest number of moves you can solve a Tower of Hanoi puzzle in? Pause the video now to find out for yourself, or watch us race to find the correct solution. Or attempt to race for it. I forgot how to do it. Okay, wait, I got it. <laughs> if you guessed 15 moves for the optimal amount of moves, you would be right. First, you move the small one to the center, and then the second one onto the side, and then you move the small one back on top of it so that you can get this one here, and then you stack the other two on top of that so that you can move the base onto the other peg. And then you'll move this small one on top so that you can free this third disc, and then you'll put the third disc on top, and then finally you'll just stack the other two on top. Ta-da! All right, so you might have noticed that in order to move the entire stack of four from this peg to this peg, you're going to have to first move the top three to the middle peg in some way, shape, or form, and then move the last base here, and then use that same way to move the other three to this peg. And the observant among you might have noticed that moving these three from one peg to another peg, that's just the Tower of Hanoi puzzle, but with three discs. And so that means that the optimal number of moves to move a four disc Tower of Hanoi puzzle is gonna be the optimal number of moves for a three disc one to here, plus one, and then plus the optimal number of moves for the three disc one again to move it from here to here. So what that means is that the minimum number of moves to complete a Tower of Hanoi puzzle with n discs, we'll call that h of n down here, is going to be equal to 2 times the no minimum number of moves for n minus 1 discs plus 1. So for example, starting from the very beginning, moving one disc from one peg to another is one move, and moving two discs from one peg to another is going to be three moves. First here, then here, then here. And so you can see that it's the minimum number of moves for two discs is going to be the minimum number of moves for one disc, which is one times two plus one equals three. And if we use three discs, it's going to be seven moves. So here, which is three moves for Hanoi of two discs, and then plus one to move it here, plus three again. And so, you might have noticed that there's another way to write the minimum number of moves for a Tower of Hanoi puzzle of n discs, which is going to be 2 to the power of n minus 1, because all of these numbers are 1 less than a power of 2. And if you want to play around with the solutions for the Tower of Hanoi puzzle, just go to collab.research.google.com and copy-paste in this GitHub link, which I'll put in the description below. Click the GitHub tab, Paste it here, and click the search button. And here's computer code that you can use to try to run a Tower of Hanoi simulation yourself. I'll do a quick rundown of the basics. 
So we have this class called Towers, which is going to simulate the pegs and disks that we are using for Tower Panel. And inside Towers, there's a couple of methods, including Move, which moves the disk from one peg to another, and Snap, which just displays all of the attributes inside the Towers and our Tower Panel information. We also have this method called Move Panel, which is going to complete the optimal solution for a Tower Panel puzzle. So all you have to do is run this code by clicking this button here. And once it's done running, you go down to here, where you have a Tower of Hanoi solver. So for example, we can solve for four disks by typing four here, clicking run. And as you can see, all of our solutions are here. All of the moves from the starting state to the first move to the second move, all the way to the 15th move which we calculated is the optimal solution. The link to Google Colab and my GitHub will be put in the description below. And I've documented the code on this Google Colab link so you can learn more if you check it out. With three pegs, you have Hanoi's puzzle. But as soon as you add another peg into the equation, you get a different puzzle called Reeves puzzle. You could solve this just like how you solve a Hanoi's puzzle, but then you would only be using three out of the four pegs and you wouldn't get the best optimal amount of moves. So what do you think is the optimal solution? Pause the video now and try to figure it out for yourself. Well, instead of doing one Hanoi puzzle, we could try doing three. So for example, we could split this into two pieces, two parts, one with two discs and one with two discs, and use, for example, these three pegs to Hanoi's puzzle these two to this peg, and then use these three pegs to move these two here using Hanoi's puzzle, and then use these three pegs, for example, to, to move these two disks on top of here. And so we took a process that would normally take 15 moves with Hanoi's to a process with nine moves, which is three moves to move two disks to a different peg times three. It isn't actually just Hanoi's puzzles inside of these Reeves puzzles. There's actually more Reeves puzzles inside of the Reeves puzzle. When you take these two smaller top disks, you can use any of these four pegs, making it actually a Reeves puzzle instead of a Hanoi's puzzle. However, when you take the bottom two bigger disks, you can only use these three pegs, making it a Hanoi's puzzle. And then once you put them back on, when you put these two back on, you can actually still use all four again. So it would be another Reeves puzzle. So it would actually be two Reeves puzzles and one Hanoi's puzzle inside of the Reeves puzzle. And this might not be, make a big difference for only four discs, but if you add five more discs, then you will really see the difference in the amount of moves it takes to solve it. But if Reeves puzzle is faster than Tower of Hanoi, then how do we know where to split the discs so we get the optimal number of moves? That's right, more coding. In the same Google Colab file that we had before, there's also a method called split. And what split does is it iterates through every viable combination of splitting a Reeves puzzle to find the optimal split. So we've run the first cell already, and now we can go down to here, the split function, and just run split for up to 10 disks here. And now we can see that for four disks, the optimal top split is gonna be two. So two on the top and then two on the bottom. And so the optimal number of moves would be nine, which is what we got before, even though we already used panel. But if we take a look at, for example, nine, then the optimal top split is six. So six on the top and three on the bottom for a grand total of 41 moves optimally. And just like before, you can see the solutions here with code as well. If we go down, to this cell, which solves Reeves puzzle, just change the number here to whatever you want. For example, here are four disks and click run. And here you can see all of the moves again, this time totaling up to nine. So how exactly is Reeves puzzle so much faster than Hanoi's? Well, let's take a look at the minimum number of moves required to solve a Reeves puzzle of 12 disks. We'll call this R of 12. And so this can be split into two Reeves puzzles with eight disks plus a Hanoi's puzzle of four disks, which can further be split up, this Reeves puzzle of eight disks can be split up into two Reeves puzzles of five disks plus a Hanoi's puzzle of three disks. You can keep splitting up these Reeves puzzles 
until you finally get to a state where there are no more Reeves puzzles, which is 16 Hanoi's puzzles of one disc, which is just moving one disc over 16 times, plus 12 Hanoi's puzzles of two discs, plus two Hanoi's puzzles of three discs, plus a Hanoi's puzzle of four discs. So Reeves puzzles are actually just made up of a bunch of... Okay, okay, last time, last time. So Reeves puzzles are actually just made up of a bunch of smaller Hanoi's puzzles. So for example, this Reeves puzzle of 12 discs has a maximum of 4 discs for the Hanoi's puzzle. And if you solve the Reeves puzzle of 12 discs, you'll get 81 moves compared to the Hanoi's puzzles with 12 discs that has 4,095 moves to solve. So the way to solve these Reeves puzzle is actually using something called the Frame Stewart algorithm. And we don't actually have to use a code to solve this, we can do it by hand. So we would find the split by taking the optimal k equals n minus the square root of 2n plus 1 plus 1 to the nearest integer, and that would be your optimal split. And one last thing. What if we tried doing Reeves puzzle with 64 disks, just like in the original Tower of Hanoi? So let's just change the split first. 64, we run it. And as you can see up here, our optimal split for 64 disks is 54 on top and 10 on the bottom. And according to our math from before, what that means is that the largest Hanoi decomposition that this Reeves puzzle has is just 10 disks, which is a massive improvement over the 64 disks we'd have to do in a normal Tower of Hanoi. And the results show in our answer too. The most optimal number of moves for 64 disks is 18,433, which is huge. A huge improvement, I mean. So let's go back to our original problem, namely how to end the world quicker. So with 64 discs and 3 pegs like the original puzzle, it would take optimally 18.4 quintillion moves to solve. And at the rate of one move per second until the end of time, this would take 585 billion years. For reference, the universe is about 13.7 billion years old, and Earth is about 4.5 billion. So that's a lot of years. Even if you split the discs in half from 64 to 32, the minimum amount of moves would still be 429 million, and it would take 136 years to solve. So it might not be completed in your lifetime, but it could get completed in your kids' or your grandkids' lifetimes. However, if you add one more peg and make it a Reeves puzzle, it goes from a minimum of 18.4 quintillion to 18,433 moves and you can finish it in five hours. That's less than a school day. That's all for this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And share it with your friends.